2006 scoring guidelines for the AP Calc test. Question four, no calculator. Gives you a table. You're thinking Riemann sums. You're thinking mean value theorem. You're thinking a whole bunch of things, okay? It says rocket A has a positive velocity of B at T after being launched upward from an initial height of zero feet at time zero. That's your initial condition. The velocity of the rocket is recorded for select times of T over the zero to 80 seconds as it's shown above. All right? Find the average acceleration of the rocket over the time interval zero to eight. Okay. That's just, think about it. That is simply doing V sub 80 minus V sub zero divided by the time. It got 49 meter feet per second from five feet per second over 80 seconds. So you notice down here, you, you get one point for the answer, 11 twentieths. Now there is a point for units later on. So you should have 11 twentieths feet per second squared. Okay, and that's just one point. So give yourself a point for that. Using correct units, explain the meaning of the integral from 10 to 70 of V of T dt in terms of the rocket's flight. Then use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals to equal length of equal length to approximate that Riemann that interval. Okay, first of all, it's seconds times feet per second. Do you guys agree this is the amount of feet, the distance of travel in feet? So here's what the explanation is. Since the velocity is positive. 10 to 70 represents the distance feet traveled by the rocket from time 10 to time 7. You need to be a distance in feet from time 10 to time 70 to get credit. That's the point. Then to use the midpoint rule, you have to realize that the gap here is 60. If you're going to make three sub intervals of equal length, they got to be 20, right? 60 divided by 3 is 20. And we're looking right here, thinking of that interval, okay, from 10 to 70. Now, the, if you're going to use the midpoint, all right, you have 10, 30, 50, 70. Your gap is 20. Your gap is 20. Your gap is 20. The midpoint is via 20. Your midpoint here is via 40. Your midpoint here is via 60. And you'll notice they wrote that out right here. All right, that you use those three values is worth a point. And that when you multiply those, add those three up and multiply by 20, you should get 2,020 feet. Yeah. You get a point for the value, units come in later. You should have feet. Last part. Rock, <laughs> rocket B is launched upward with an acceleration of A of T equals 3 over the root of T plus 1 feet per second per second. At time T equals 0, the initial height of the rocket is 0 feet, so launched from the ground. And the initial velocity is 2 feet per second. Which of the two rockets is traveling faster at time 80 seconds? Well, we know how fast rocket A is going. Rocket A, you guys agree, is going 49 feet per second. So we just got to figure out how fast is rocket B traveling at 80 feet. So we have to do the antiderivative of A sub T. So we have to do the integral of that function, okay? to find V sub T. And when you do that, you should get this as the antiderivative. All right, that's worth two points. This portion's worth a point, and the constant of integration, the plus C, is worth a point. All right? You have to integrate and do the antiderivative. When you plug in, and this is what you got to catch, it said at time zero, the velocity was two. When you plug in zero for T, the velocity should be 2. And you do that and you solve for C, right? you should get the constant it is negative 4. And they plug that back in. But they don't even give a point for the constant value. They just give a point that you used 0 and 2. For time 0, the velocity is 2. That's where the points are awarded. So you have to see that step in your work. All right? Now we plug in the constant of negative 4. And now we've developed a, an equation that gives us velocity. So all we have to do now is plug in 80. When you plug in 80 into this equation with the arrows I just put on the board, we get 50. Well, guess what? 50 is greater than 49. So rocket B is traveling faster at time 80 because 50 is greater than 49. That's a point, too. And you've got to draw a conclusion. You've got to show a comparison all right, to get that point. Lastly, if you have right units in A and B, if you have feet and feet squared per second, that's where the last point for it.
An alternative method would be to do the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you want b of 80, that's going to be equal to b of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 80 of at dt. If you did this, you're going to get all the credit as long as you end up with 50 as the answer for b of 80. If you do that, you knew the initial velocity was 2, 0 to 80 was the time, the integral was 3 over the square root of t plus 1, tt. And I, this is a cooler way of doing it. It's very nice. It does give, it gets rid of having to use a constant integration because of the subtraction, but it uses the initial condition. It can, and in the end, you don't get there. Well, I think they have to give it. Um, they have to give it because you use fundamental theorem calculus, and it is a method that works and gives you the exact right answer. It ends up when you do all the integration, it equals 50. And then you still have to do the comparison. All right, you're going to get this. You still have to have some sort of comparison between the rockets because they want you to, they, you have to show you understand that rocket A is going 49, right? That you understood that you had to read that value from the table, okay? That you didn't have to do any work for that value. That's an important realization on the test. All right.